Universal recently revealed the new wearable tech that will allow us to interact with and play in Super Nintendo World. The power-up bands will allow guests to punch question bricks to redeem coins, play minigames around the land, and even team up in boss battles. Universal has filed several patents that seem to explain how the power-up bands and the interactive games themselves will work when the new land opens at Universal Studios Japan this summer and other Universal parks in the following years. Let's dive into these patents, as well as some official information and rumors, to try to piece together how the power-up bands will let us play a video game in real life. Super Nintendo World is a life-size living video game. You're playing it and living the most exciting adventure. In addition to the rides, dining, and shopping opportunities that will open with Super Nintendo World, guests will have the option to purchase a power-up band to participate in interactive elements located throughout the land. Similar to the way you can purchase an interactive wand to add to your experience in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, the power-up bands will be entirely optional and will not be required to experience the main attractions of Super Nintendo World. Universal revealed six unique designs for these colorful wristbands during a recent press event in Japan. While a price was not announced, it is assumed that these bands will be available for purchase inside of Super Nintendo World, and it is certainly possible that additional styles may be released over time. The power-up bands will work in conjunction with an app that you'll need to download to your mobile device. The app will keep track of your score, as well as other achievements earned by playing minigames and collecting keys or stamps throughout the interactive areas. The app will also display an interactive map of the land to help you locate achievements you have yet to earn. According to rumors, as well as what little information was confirmed during the media event, it sounds like we will only be able to experience the multiplayer segment, referred to as a boss battle, after completing a certain number of tasks. According to the press release, by collecting a certain number of digital keys, guests can cooperate with other guests who also have keys to unlock additional gameplay opportunities, including boss battles against various enemy characters. Universal has filed several patents for technology centered around creating interactive experiences and gaming elements for a theme park land. One of the patents is specifically about how a tracking device could be worn on the wrist to communicate with technology integrated into a land. Interactive Systems and Methods with Tracking Devices, as it is called, talks about a wearable device that includes a radio frequency identification, or RFID tag. This wearable device would be able to transmit unique identification information to sensors that would help to differentiate it from other users' wearable devices in the area. A large part of this particular patent is about ensuring that users are in fact wearing a real power-up band and are not attempting to cheat the system. There are multiple methods described that could be used to verify that a guest's interaction with an element is authentic. One of the methods would involve sensors or cameras that verify the presence of a wristband, coupled with the RFID transmitting a unique identifying code. The most interesting aspects of the patent are the images that were submitted along with it. Most show multiple users pressing a wearable wristband to a cube of some sort, similar to the large question mark bricks we saw recently in promotional footage. The patent describes a way to signify to the user that they have successfully interacted, such as an LED light that illuminates on the wristband. Instead of a light on the wristband, it appears that the cubes themselves light up to show that they have been redeemed, along with a sound effect. Another possible feature of the wristband, according to the patent, would be a motion sensor, such as an accelerometer. This would allow the wristband to track a user's movements, like touching a target, dancing, waving, jabbing, or various other gestures. It was explained in the official press release from Universal that guests will be able to have interactive experiences throughout the land, making use of their arms, hands, and entire bodies as they explore, making them feel like they are truly in a video game. Another patent that was filed in 2018 talks about the overall concept of integrating gaming systems into a theme park land. This interactive gaming system would keep track of individual user scores throughout multiple rounds of play and allow them to compete with other users in a higher level, but only after certain criteria is met. In other words, rather than let users skip right to the final round, or boss battles as Universal is calling it, you must first complete other tasks located around the land. 
The patent describes how dynamic user profiles can be stored in a database, and how users can be automatically separated into groups to play in team-based games based on how many points they've earned or challenges they've completed. Scores for teams and scores for individual users would be kept and stored in a user's dynamic profile. So how well you did in a group challenge would not only affect your team's chance of winning, but also how many points you would earn yourself. This patent also describes examples of what types of experiences could be included in an interactive gaming system. One of the examples involves users pressing specific buttons or inputs that correspond to solve a puzzle on a screen. One of the rumored experiences we've heard of for the land is based on the Lucky House slot machine game as seen in Super Mario 3D World. This game could have us pulling a lever or even punching each block to stop its display from spinning just like in the game. It could even be played with multiple users working together to match the slot machine style icons. Your individual prize or score would then be sent to your user profile on the app. Another variation of an interactive experience in the patent utilizes an animatronic figure. Haptic sensors could be used to receive tactile user inputs, such as light taps, palm touches, or other contact from the users. Working alone or as a group, depending on the game scenario, you could work to defeat the animatronic figure character within an allotted time limit. The rumored final boss battle for Super Nintendo World is said to be Bowser Jr. After completing the required prior rounds and collecting enough digital keys, players will be able to reportedly face Bowser Jr. together. This patent describes how access to something like that would work, stating, The winners may scan their user-associated device at the entrance of the game finale to gain access to the game finale. While this patent describes the overall system for integrating gaming elements into a theme park land, along with a couple game examples, there are still two more patents that go into even more detail on possible games. Two patents filed by Universal in 2018 and 2017 demonstrate how mixed reality could use sensors to show a virtual representation of a player or players on a screen that matches their movements. Similar technologies are being utilized in other theme park attractions, including an upcoming dark ride for Legoland and the Secret Life of Pets Off the Leash opening soon at Universal Studios Hollywood. But in this context, it would be used in an interactive video game. The patents describe how sensors could scan players in the area, and at least one display device would display a virtual representation associated with the player. The user's motions could be matched by their on-screen counterparts, and to earn points, they might need to move in certain ways or accomplish specific patterns of movement. The user's virtual representations could be displayed as other characters or animals, and specific gestures would be used to trigger broad movements on screen or even to unlock special moves like seen in a video game. According to the patent, in an embodiment in which a virtual representation, such as a particular video game character, has particular enhanced abilities, an ability to jump extremely high, an ability to swim extremely fast, an ability to fly, then certain player movements or poses, like a small hopping motion, a swim stroke through the air, a flapping motion, may be detected and may trigger these enhanced abilities in the virtual representations of the players. In addition to recording the body movements of the users, additional controls could be provided on an interface panel, such as cranks, wheels, buttons, and sliders. Audio devices like speakers, horns, sirens, and so forth would be used to alert each player of their progress. As if the visual and audio stimuli weren't enough, the patent also describes possible physical effects that could be incorporated into this interactive experience. Bursts of warm or cold air or mist from compressed airlines could be incorporated. The examples the text gives are a blast of cold air when the user is using a motion to throw a snowball, or a blast of warm air if the user is throwing a fireball in the game. A fireball reference already sounds a lot like a Nintendo game, but the patent also describes how your virtual representation may discover a power-up that allows it to grow in size. It also includes this interesting detail about how your virtual avatar could be selected. If the game involves a larger hero and a smaller sidekick, the interactive video game system may select or recommend from the pre-generated library a relatively larger hero virtual representation for an adult player and a relatively smaller sidekick virtual representation for a child player. 
With all of these possible concepts in mind, we can imagine an interactive game where a team of players are exploring an area together and come to a point where they must use power-ups like a fire flower to hurl fireballs at a shared enemy. You must work together to defeat the bad guy while your independent scores are being recorded. This could be describing the boss battle finale where you have to face off against a foe like Bowser Jr. While these patents may explain some of the methods for how guests will be able to use the power-up bands at Super Nintendo World, they're likely not conveying just how much there will be to discover while exploring the land. Things like collecting coins, defeating bad guys, playing mini-games, and working together in boss battles may only be part of the full experience. We should know more as we get closer to the first official opening of Super Nintendo World in Universal Studios Japan this summer. The second version of Super Nintendo World is expected to open at Universal Studios Hollywood next year in 2021. Orlando's version will open with the new Epic Universe Park, expected in 2023. And finally, Universal Studios Singapore will get their version of the land by 2025. Check out our previous videos on the Mario Kart and Yoshi rides for more details, and be sure to subscribe to never miss an update. Consider joining our Patreon for early rumors and exclusive content. Thanks for watching. See you next time.